my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace, and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2022. I cannot even believe that we're here. And this is a month that is very interesting coming into the beginning of the month, Aries, where we have got your ruling planet moving into its pre-retrograde shadow time to get ready for a very long Mars in Gemini cycle plus retrograde that takes us all the way to March of 2023, it's going to bring us back around into the springtime. I mean, that's an incredibly long time to be doing a revision of energy, especially when it's your ruling planet. But nonetheless, it is starting out this month. Everything is also this kind of building, vibrating energy as we're in a high retrograde time. So there's a lot of speed that is not necessarily happening this month. And it's kind of a good thing because we need to... I think have a month in the year that really does bring a little bit more rest, does bring our attention to more Virgo qualities of, you know, holistic care for ourselves, taking care of one another, taking care of ourselves, expressing where we do need help or we need advice or we need counsel from other people to be able to move our relationships and our respective areas of life forward. So I actually really like September in terms of the energy that's available to kind of get more holistic. Um, in general in those cosmic skies. So let's jump in here and get to what's going on this month, okay? All right, Aries, right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, I want to bring your attention to the beginning of the retrograde cycle for Mars, your ruling planet. Now here on the 3rd, we're going to see Mars move into its pre-retrograde shadow time, which means it's going to start to slow down and vibrate and tell us, okay, pay attention, we're going to do some lessons here. And this is going to be at 8 degrees of Gemini. So I want you to note, where is 8 degrees of Gemini on your chart? If you don't have a chart, please get one, astro.com, get one from me, get one from your favorite astrologer, hand draw one, do you, but get the chart so you can see exactly what house and what aspects this is making in your chart that is telling the story of what this very long Mars retrograde cycle is going to be bringing to your attention. Now we're going to see Mars step into its retrograde October 30th at 25 degrees of Gemini. Okay, so the entirety of this Mars retrograde cycle is moving between 8 degrees of Gemini and 25 degrees of Gemini. What is the story that lights up here for you? As of the 3rd, we're going to start to pay attention to it. As of October 30th, we're going to move into review. Now, Mars will move out of its retrograde on January 12th, and it's, of course, going to be back at 8 degrees of Gemini, and we'll leave the full retrograde cycle on uh, March 15th at 25 degrees of Gemini, and then we'll move forward. So we're really locked into this Mars-Gemini retrograde and review energy. Now, when Mars is retrograding, in the energy of Gemini, we're reviewing what we're talking about, the contracts I've made, the agreements that we've made, you know, things with siblings maybe will come up for you because this is going to light up the third house space for you, Aries. So buying and selling of things, this includes cars, houses, selling courses, building courses, writing that book, maybe things with study and education are back on your table, but it's also Martian. What are the conversations you need to have that are hard, that are challenging? What are the places that you need to do the most challenging thing, which is to go say, I don't know, and ask for help or allow people to ask help and advice and counsel from you? Whatever this looks like, we're looking at the strategies that we have that get us to what we desire, which are all Mars qualities, and we've got to use our words and our communication fashion to get there, and that's the beauty of Gemini. Now, pushing forward a couple days, we get to the fifth, and we're going to see uh, Venus move into the energy of Virgo. Ooh, say that like five times fast. Venus, Virgo. Venus, Virgo. Anyways, so Venus is going to move into the energy of Virgo. Now, this is going to light up your sixth house space, okay? As Venus moves into the energy of Virgo, our love style. Our attraction, remember, it's not just attraction like how sexy you are, but the way that we attract and magnetize things to us changes. It's not going to be so Leo. It's not so fixed fire. Now we move into mutable earth. So we're going to get a bit more practical. We get detail oriented. It's like I want to holistically 
right? I want the best health. I want the best energy. I want the most perfection to be coming available to me. I want it to come to me. I also think that this is a great time where Venus is in Virgo to look at your finances, right? How are you using, what's the health and the wellness of your finances on a day-to-day -day basis? Because the sixth house is not just health and wellness, but it's your daily routines, like the mundane things that we do every day, the way you brush your teeth, the way that you spend your money, right? Virgo, the way that you take care of your health and your wellness, including your mental health and wellness. Venus here is attracting in some energy. It's like this needs to be practical, this needs to be detail oriented, this needs to have some make sense to it, right? So it's love in a very different way. You can also find yourself all the way until September 29th feeling more service oriented, right? I want to be helpful. I feel like the way that I love is, is in a way that I need to be of service to other people. But like I said, I think that this month in the holistic service energy is also just as much Aries about receiving. So where do you need to receive help and allow somebody else to be of service to you? These are great concepts to be considering as Venus moves into your sixth house. Now, Venus is also a harmonizer. So truly, Venus in the sixth house can make these daily routines a little bit easier. The relationship with coworkers. Maybe if you're a freelance person, you can see a financial benefit maybe coming around the corner or coming to you through Venus moving into that sixth house place. On the ninth, we've got Mercury turning retrograde in the energy of Libra. Okay, this lights up your seventh house space. Now as Mercury turns retrograde, it is at eight degrees of Libra. So locate that on your chart first of all, okay? Your personal chart. But in the general, Mercury retrograde in Libra is gonna hit your seventh house. So there's a review of conversations, decisions, agreements, contracts. Are you seeing a theme this month in your conversational, your air life this month, Aries? And you're reviewing those things, right? Do they make sense? Do you need to go back over and have that conversation? Was there a conversation that you started with a spouse, a partner, a colleague, yourself, maybe a year ago, maybe a few weeks ago, and now you're coming back to it? What does it look like in terms of what you're coming back to? Now, Mercury is going to take its retrograde between 8 degrees of Libra and 24 degrees of Virgo. So we are going to see it move backwards and get back into the space of that sixth house where we'll go over conversations at that time. But for now, Mercury is beginning this retrograde at 8 degrees of Libra. So take a look at these relationships. What things do you need to make some decisions, have some conversations about. And for some of you, it will be easy. We need to decide to change the cabinets a different color. For some of you, it will feel heavier. We're tied up in the court system, going through a divorce, right? Maybe even Aries, the relationship of you with you. That could be incredibly different. Mars is in the energy of Gemini. It's changing the way you think. It's changing the way you move to get what you desire. And that is creating the dynamic of a different relationship. Depending on your age, depending on your experience, are you flashing back to your childhood at this point, Aries? And this is changing your relationship of you with you and what you think and how you talk to you and how you understand yourself. This is very much so, I think, Symbolic of that Mercury and Libra energy. Now, when we get to the 10th, we're going to have a full moon in the energy of Pisces, okay? Now, the full moon asks us to end something, acknowledge something, and make an adjustment, okay? So for you, this full moon that's happening at 17 degrees of Pisces is going to light up your 12th house space. What a gorgeous time, Aries, of surrender. There is something to be surrendered. There is something that it is time for it to go. You know it's time to go. This moon is connecting with Uranus. You know it's time for it to leave and you're like, in order for me to move forward or this is just too heavy. So I think there is a semblance of ease that comes with the ending acknowledgement or adjustment to your 12th house. Now in the 12th house, we keep spiritual sickness. We keep illness. We keep things that we're doing behind the scenes, things that can lead to our own undoing. We also keep our creativity, right? Things that are welling from the deepness 
of us. We keep spiritual work in the 12th house as well. So if there has been something that it has been time to put it down, release it, move with the flow of life, I think that this full moon very much so speaks to you being able to do that. Now, full moons can also make us so emotionally aware that we need to bring something into the light. So what is that for you? You know, is there something that you've been struggling with? Is there beautiful art and creativity or a spiritual bursting like you feel like you phoenix in some way that you need to bring forward? Is there something? Are there babies coming forward in your life? Are there family members transitioning in your life and you need a space to share that and bring it all to assimilation? Pisces is the energy to be able to do that because in the end it comes down to whatever's coming out of this 12th house space. It's speaking to your spiritual needs, health, wellness, and assimilation, okay? When we get to the 22nd, we're going to see the sun enter into the energy of Libra, lighting up now your seventh house space. Okay, the sun brings light, heat, life, and motivation, so this becomes a social time in your year. It does every year, every year. We get to September, Aries. I don't know if you've charted this yet, but every year we get to September and your social life or your busy life or your communication life, your relationship life gets a little bit busier depending on what you do with that. That's your business, but it does get busy. So first of all, watch. You might be having a lot of conversation. Your attention may be required in a lot of social things. You know, I think about it very practically. Aries, are you going back to school? Do you have children going back to school? The planet is going back to school. So we start to get that back to school energy where things are busier. There's more people on the roads. There's more people on the tram, right? Whatever it is, we know that your social life gets busy here. But it also puts a very big spotlight on partnerships in general. Now, I already spoke to the first one being you with you. Aries, at this point in 2022, we're nine months in. Where are you with you? And that doesn't need to be an answer of you're living your best life. It needs to be an answer of where are you with you, right? Where are you with the relationships in your life? Are they happy? Are they light? Are they vital? Is there motivation? Is there heat? Is there fun available in this area of your life? It's a very Venus terrain. So look at what you can be giving there. Look at where you need to cooperate and collaborate a little bit more to bring this area to some real lush life, okay? On the 23rd, we've got that Mercury retrograde now sliding back into the energy of Virgo, and it's going to travel all the way up to that 24 degrees. But as Mercury slides this retrograde back into the energy of Virgo, you're going back over this sixth house space. Daily routines work. And you know what? One of the things I think with this slide from Libra to Mercury is truly please watch to see if there's a financial benefit for you in some way as Mercury does this dance back into the energy of Libra. It's almost like, I don't want to just say financial, but if there was um, a resource that was lost in some way to you in this last year, this retrograde could actually be walking that back forward. If it was work that was lost, there's an opportunity to maybe make space and um, you're analyzing, right? It's Virgo, it's an analytical, it's a critical energy, but did you launch something a few weeks ago when Mercury moved into pre-retrograde shadow time and now it's coming to fruition or you're hearing back about it? Is this just the shape of your daily routine, you're going back over it, whether that's what time you're getting up to work out and take care of your body and your spiritual fitness, you know, whether this has to do with the actual daily routines changing. Mercury is back in here to help smooth and bring critical Critical clarity to this. It's discernment. It's discerning Virgo energy to make it the very best that it can be, okay? On the 25th, right? We are back to back in these couple days. It's going to be a busy week for us as we get to this week in September. On the 25th, we've got a new moon happening at two degrees of Libra. So there we go, adding a little bit of more umph to this seventh house energy, okay? Now the new moon is where we're planting our seeds of intention to begin something new, or to begin something with a fresh energy, but we plant in the soil of magic. So for good or for ill, what you plant here around your relationships, you're gonna work on for at least four weeks, right? So in your partnerships, in conversations that you're needing to have, in in contracts that you're signing, 
in negotiations that you're making, anything that brings a marriage of two sources together, I would tell you, plant your seeds of intention to allow this to be filled with wonderful compromise, wonderful cooperation, wonderful collaboration. Because remember, the height of Libra energy is the genuine evolutionary understanding that at a certain point, you can only go so far on your own. So you've got to have some kind of partnership to take it to the next level to round out the learning to have the next experience so when we're in Libra season it really is what do I need to do to be a team player right to bring me to the we so plant your seeds of intention to begin something gorgeous in your relationships there on the 29th, now we've got Venus moving out of that Virgo energy and into the energy of Libra, home court advantage. Venus is in domicile here, so just giving off light, just giving off that love, giving off the Venus vibration, which means you are magnetic. Your relationships have just had a new moon, okay? They are have just had Mercury run through with some retrograde, so a little review to bring something back to the table. And now Venus is magnetizing this area all the way until October 23rd. And so there is nothing but goodness available here. Now, some of that goodness could get you into trouble. Venus and Libra, you're like, you know what? I can spend that extra money, right? I do want this partnership to be great or to be grand or to be the, the most beautiful or to be the best that it can be. Libra is very business savvy. I think I need to buy this course or three, right? So sometimes the goodness can be too good. So I do want you to pay attention while we've got Venus in the energy of Libra that you're not taking it too far. Okay, but other things I'm thinking about while uh, Venus is here is that first of all, it does bring sweet words to your collaborations. It brings sweet words to your partnerships to where you need to cooperate. It brings a little bit of healing and ease in the bumpy road of anything that's in the court system or things that you need to be getting figured out. It's very relationship oriented. And as long as you're in the interdependence of this energy instead of the codependence, I think that this can really bring a lot of beautiful light to this seventh house area for you. Now remember what you are seeking is seeking you as well so while Venus is here putting out that beautiful magnetizing signal to bring things to you hone in on your vibration of what you would like to see in your partnerships in your work in your beauty routines in your etiquette and how you present yourself whatever you think is going to level up your partnerships that can be done beautifully this month Aries all right my absolutely beautiful Aries friends I hope that you have a gorgeous month. We've got from September, we've got about six months till we're going to get to birthday time, right? So you're halfway through your year. This is the check-in point in the opposite sign from you. So now you're experiencing the polarities. Everything that you said in March, I want to be this. I want to have this in my year. I want to manifest this in. Check in. How are you doing and what are the partnerships that you need to holistically bring into your life, be of service to, allow to be of service to you, that allows that Aries vision from your annual solar request to come in. All right, my beautiful Aries friends, I love you a ton, and I look forward to seeing you in October where that ruling planet is going to go retrograde. We've got an eclipse. October is a busy month, and I'll see you in there. Bye, friends.